Okay, Claire, good to have you back at Speaker's Corner. We're in the famous pret a manger of Speaker's Corner. Speaker's Corner is down there. Um, Claire of Secular Quranist. You might not see her that often, but uh, come on, let's give you a picture on uh, how you normally look on the internet. This is this is how she looks on the internet. Okay, buy her book. I bought it. She forced me this morning. <laughs> <laughs> it's, she's an interesting character and a character shows in her book as well it's very entertaining at the least and I do and and uh, not it's, I think it's insulting just to call it entertaining uh, when I first heard you say talk about secular crimeism I thought you were well ahead of your times to know the revolution is happening Islam is taking over the world quite evidently just statistically so that's a bit, a bit of an interesting background about you uh, we have a lot of whatsapp conversations and uh, and I feel like you're a good person to talk about this idea of Spinoza's God you've got a lot of insight um, so somebody asked me uh, I think he's an Ahmadi Muslim or something and he said I'm looking for something about disproving Spinoza's God Spinoza's God is I'm gonna try to summarize it. you can tell me what I've missed basically God is nature nature is God God is nothing outside nature God is just a bunch of rules God is not conscious and God does not care what you do. God does not listen to your prayers. Have I missed out something? Yes. Uh, um, God is the universe. The universe is God, I think, is the, the essence of pantheism. And the idea is um, used to, to say, I, I believe in God, but I don't want to obey the laws of the Abrahamic God, which are too much. And, and you, you can appreciate the beauties of nature and you know wonder at the universe which is such a magnificent you know mysterious wonderful thing without having to obey the laws of God yeah. and just in case people are going oh I don't want to hear about some philosopher called Spinoza I think it's been adopted by modern day spiritualists who exactly like you say they don't they want to they realize there must be something spiritual and some sort of God out there but from my experience, they really don't want to listen to a god or follow. They don't. They like. They hate organized religion. They go through all the, the typical, typical cliches. Um, so they they basically say everything is God, and it sounds cool, right? And so let's break that down. So and I like to always uh, mention verses of the Holy Quran because I'm a Muslim. And my background is I don't like just theolog theological conversations, but conversations that make a difference. So I try to bring in why it makes a difference that we talk about this. Um, but let's start with the verse of the Holy Quran, which is, if I quote it in a reasonable way, have they been created from nothing or are they themselves the creators? Chapter 52, verse 36. So Spinoza's God essentially is they're saying nothing created the universe or the universe is always there or it created itself and that's so illogical like that's like saying your book created itself no you spent quite a lot of time writing it do you know what I mean um, things just don't there's no human experience that tells us that it makes sense to say something as complicated as the universe and the universe is not just a I, it's not just a bunch of stuff it's us it's incredibly complex organisms the whole universe is filled with complex organisms um, and so that kind of stuff doesn't happen by mistake like my simple phone doesn't happen by mistake your book doesn't happen by mistake you know because everything created has a purpose you know I, I wrote the book for a purpose and 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 um, you could say well God created us for a purpose and but if, if you're determined not to believe in God, you, you, you think, well, you know, there, there's us, and we have a will to power, and humans have the greatest will to power because we are the most intelligent species on Earth, and, and you know, but, but nobody created us. We, we all kind of um, existed as sort of 
you know, whatever we, we were from the beginning and we evolved into humans and humans are powerful. And, and that's the story people tell themselves and they think it's scientific because they throw in a few words like evolution or whatever and I suppose they've fo fallen for um, athe Western atheistic propaganda that says that intelligence or intelligent things can be created by millions millions of years of accidents evolution mm -hmm. and as a Muslim I believe in evolution is a fundamental teaching of the Quran it's actually how God is described the God who creates in stages verse 2 of the Quran uh, Rabbi al Alameen the creator who creates in stages um, uh, so They've fallen for sort of, sort of a propaganda where you don't need a god to create the universe. Would you have you? Do you agree with that? That you can have a universe without because you're an agnostic, um, even though you support Quranic ideas, Islamic ideas. Do you believe that it's reasonable to believe that the universe created itself and it required no intelligence? Well, it, it's the idea of you know final attribution. So, for for people who believe in the Abrahamic God, they're going to attribute the creation of the universe to to the Abrahamic God. And if you're going to what do you uh, attribute it to as an agnostic? I would say that you know I'm either agnostic or I accept the logic of, of this narrative. Because Which narrative? The Abrahamic narrative. Because, because we want um, a God to be um, morally perfect, to know our hearts and minds, to occasionally answer our prayers. No, it's not about what you want, because that belittles the argument. I'm talking about a scientific, logical argument. Okay, do you have any counter evidence to the idea that to make something complex and of reasonable design and purpose, it has to be, it requires an intelligent creator? Um, I will already explain to you the, the alternative of all these create creatures um, aspiring to be to become better, having a will to power, as Nietzsche would say, and, and finally getting to our current state of existence. But I'm saying it would be better for society if we believe in the Abrahamic God, because he has therapeutic um, Okay, I, I think you're escaping the question, so I'm going to ask you a question. I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. No, I'm what saying, what's the most, what's, what's the, yeah, exactly. I'm only asking what's logical. I'm not going to stick on this too much because I don't believe in, but if somebody said to you, your book, no, oh, let's say, because you know you made this book, right? Okay. My phone just came about by accident. You wouldn't. No, because we know, you know, whoever made your phone made your phone. But 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 if, if you just attribute the creation of the universe to the universe and not having been created because it has always existed, then then that is a logical reason for not obeying God's laws. And, and I think ultimately, people believe what they want to believe, and they can um, weave narratives to explain their position. Okay, so the second thing that they say that in Spinoza's idea of God is that God is not conscious. Okay, and so um, I would say there's two things. I think I will repeat one thing. Like, you need some level of awareness and consciousness to design the complexity we see at the moment. So that's one thing. And then there's a. The Quran itself is evidence of God's consciousness because it's a relationship to things that are actually happening in the world and saying this is how it works better. So there's consciousness. That's just just two examples. Um, and then that I would, the reason why I point out the Quran as opposed to our personal experiences is at least it's codified, written down, something we can all objectively look at. Um, any thoughts about that? Like about is that would you would that in any way prove to you that God is conscious? Um, yes, if you're, if you're saying that, that you know, he has communicated to humanity twice through the Torah and the Quran. And, he, and many, many more times. Yeah. I believe in the original Vedas and whatever. But yeah. yeah. And, uh, or you could say, you know, very clever, wise men wrote the Torah and the Quran and 
and, and very wise men who knew about the process of the Big Bang before Einstein did. So that's kind of the level of, you know, that would that is what is required to write a book like the Quran, which has got many many scientific truths that nobody knew or understood at, or at the time. So they're just average wise men, superhuman wise men. That would what that would, a committee a committee of people who knew science a thousand years ahead of their time well more than that even two thousand years ahead of their time so just it would be unreasonable to say that the Quran was just uh, a freak accident or you know uh, uh, so yeah so in short I think that's an example of God's consciousness and then finally um, there was a section uh, from what I've understood about Spinoza's God is that he doesn't listen to prayers. Yeah, and so the Quran gives a, a challenge. Interesting, it says, and when my servant asks thee about me, say, I am near. I answer the prayer of the person who prays to me, that they should listen to me and believe in me, that they may follow the right way. So, um, uh, Quran chapter two, verse hundred eighty-seven. Um, so there's a challenge by God say I'm here you don't have to the you don't have to logically necessarily dig me up through science you can have a real experience real practical relationship with me yeah uh, and so it's a challenge to defy Spinoza's idea any thoughts about that um, I think all we have to do is if we choose to believe we will have a benefit and I, I'm saying the evidence is 50-50 I know you disagree but, but we, we could go either way um, in, in believing in God or not believing in God but I'm saying for the Quran to work properly you, you know most people would have to believe and that would create a situation where where people would obey these laws from generation to generation and not have to keep you know changing their political system and having revolutions and upsetting themselves because it's very upsetting when you reach a certain um, place in your history where you have to change your religion having realized that it is kaput because it's very traumatized yeah. And so now, just to finish it off, I sort of I like your sort of insights. Often, we'll see what insights you have here um, about why. So the history of uh, the story of Spinoza is something along the lines of he's a Jewish philosopher who was, let's say, excommunicated from his community for heresy, heresy basically denying a conscious God well, the God of Judaism yes. and saying he's just God is just a bunch of laws of the universe and things like that essentially some people might disagree about who what Spinoza was even talking about but um, I suppose my question is uh, why do you think people I, okay I would put it like this there's no logical reasoning behind believing God is not conscious God is just a bunch of laws because of what we just said. Why are people so desperate, essentially, not to believe in God? What do you think? They don't want to obey his laws. So if you, if you say, well, it doesn't even exist, then that gives you the perfect reason to not obey his laws. And maybe they don't realize the benefit of the laws. What do you think? I suppose they think it's backward and, and for Europeans they've had a very bad experience because of the burnt and bloody history of Christianity. They used to burn each other at the stake for, for heresy, for denying the divinity of Jesus and I suppose they probably think that Christianity is the best religion in the world because it, it allowed Europeans to acquire three global empires and if Christianity has failed then all religions because they are by definition inferior would, would not work. Yeah, so you basically are saying religion has been abused so badly that people in the West have given up on it. They've seen they've they, religion has been used for imperialism and religion has been used to control people and be horrific to each other, burning each other and killing each other. So by extension, they think, oh, it must be all false, therefore, which is not entirely logical, but you can kind of get why they've kind of run away from it. Is that kind of what you're saying? Yes, because I suppose they, they could say to themselves that European civilization progressed after they gave up on Christianity. 
after the American Revolution, after the French Revolution, and and you know, and, and they don't want to go back to that. And I think they haven't really. I don't want to make this video too long. And by the way, thank you for keeping up with it. I I left my uh, tripod, and so I've had so many people help me out today. It's so nice, and people are disagreeing with me, helping me out. It's really nice, uh, which is a nice thing in itself. Uh, it says gives people hope about humanity, actually. Um, so, I forgot what I was going to say. Yeah, I don't know. I think, I don't know. Any other thoughts? Um, I, I'm saying that, you see, the premise of secular Quranism is that even if God doesn't exist, it still it is a good idea if we want our, our group, our nation, our tribe to carry on to to obey the laws in the, in the Quran. That's all I'm saying. Even if God doesn't exist, um, our laws would be better if we follow them. Yeah, so I think, um, let's say, we could put it this way, uh, even as an agnostic who is, let's say, neutral, I would like to think I'm neutral, I'm thoughtful, but even from your point of view, even if you don't believe in God, you can see that uh, Western society is breaking down and as far as you can see the best solution seems to be from the Quran or Islam yes because all the religions that we have heard of the by world religions they all support marriage and family values so so the least your religion should be doing is to keep you having legitimate children so that they will you know not be too inferior in status and ability to do their parents um, and, and, you know, we don't want to suffer the problem of degeneracy, um, which is, you know, a terrible thing because you can't fix it. Because if every generation is worse than the previous one, then, how, you know, how are you going to fix the problem unless you change the whole system? Cool. So to round it up, we talked about why you must have a conscious God and the idea of Spinoza's God is really just escaping responsibility really and then like why are people believing in this ridiculous idea and it's really really common it's just because they just don't get the value of it and maybe they should just study it and run. don't be so scared of it don't be they've got reason to be scared of it from history but there are a bunch of nice people on the internet you could ask questions about and you'll be pleasantly surprised hopefully when you research the the meanings and the the, t the teachings of Islam and even Christianity and other religions. So thank you very much for your time.